Pride is a series of programs about people who give us reason to be proud and whose success inspires. Pride is about people from Kazakhstan who added luster to their country while living far away. Pride is about the stories of courage, perseverance and deserved success. Pride is about the stars, businessmen, politicians, artists who are still Kazakhstan people, no matter what country they live in. They are our pride. In today's program, Vladimir Smirnov, fate smiles upon him. In 1621, Swedish King Gustav founded a port city called Sundsvall. And today the film crew of our project Pride came here to meet the legend of the world skiing, Vladimir Smirnov, also known as Smire. We had to travel almost 6,000 kilometers for the smitting and it was worth it. The Smirnov family is hospitable hosts and interesting people. They might seem like an ordinary Swedish couple, but even now, 20 years after the end of the sports career, Smira is recognized on the streets and remembered for his bright victories. Vladimir Smirnov was born on March the 7th, 1964 in Shutinsk, Kokshetau region of the Kazakh Soviet Socialist Republic back then. Soviet and Kazakh skier, 1994 Olympic champion, four-time world champion, four-time silver and two-time bronze medalist of the Olympic Games, two-time winner of a crystal globe, former member of the International Olympic Committee. He is one of the top skiers of the 80s, 90s of the 20th century. Honored Master of Sports of the USSR, Honored Master of Sports of Kazakhstan. From 1980 to 1992, he represented the Soviet Union. From 1992 to 1999, he represented Kazakhstan. Currently, he lives with his wife Valentina in the Swedish city of Sundsvall. The couple has two daughters, Anna and Karolina. He's a businessman. Smirnov's wins and awards number is huge, including a list of Olympic medals. In Lillehammer in 1994, Smirnov won not only gold, but also two silver medals. In 1988, he brought home two silver and bronze from Calgary. In Nagano in 1999, the athlete got another bronze. And all of that is in addition to 11 World Championships, where he won total 4 gold, 4 silver and 3 bronze medals. The long list of achievements includes other games and tournaments, where Vladimir won not only the tracks, but also the hearts of judges and fans. The athlete keeps records of all his victories, the stores, the prizes and memorable gifts at his home in his small personal museum and there is something to look at. Wow! It is amazing! This is where we keep good memories, good thoughts. What a good picture! We have lots of good photos. Oh my goodness! That's a lot of medals! And you probably remember every victory. Of course, all of them are. Victories cannot be forgotten. Yes, the World Championships, the Olympic Games, the World Cups. I will always remember all of them. When I come here, I look back. World Cups, stages of World Cups, Olympic Games of 1994. I have photos. President Nazarbayev met us after 1994. He awarded the Dunk Order. Here it is. Smirnov's sports career lasted for 11 years, and all of these years were full of moments that not only he remembers. Everything began in his hometown Shuchinsk many years ago. It is interesting that Vladimir started skiing in a relatively mature age for professional sports. 
Here I am about 8 years old. I started skiing at the age of 12 after watching the 1976 Olympic Games. When I first saw the representative of Kazakhstan at the Olympic Games, Ivan Ivanovich Goranin. And then I realized that we, people from Kazakhstan, can also be there, and that became my dream – to be at the Olympic Games one day. And after that I began to train. And I began intensively training and actually achieved something. Well, 12 is not a young age to start sports, right? If we look at the Norwegians, Swedes, Finns, they start skiing almost as soon as they start working. But our culture is a little bit different. The skiing was not developed well. There was no good infrastructure for trainings. There were some people out there who skied in the woods a little bit, but the real sports, of course, needed other conditions and infrastructure. Back then we did not have skiing coaches, there were no teachers, and we just used to go down the hill. We had no thematic training. In 1978 in our school, where I started at the secondary school number 4 of the town of Shuchinsk, we had a very good physical education teacher who, besides teaching, opened certain clubs and trained children. So the children have hobbies. At that time our school had basketball and skiing and biathlon. All of those clubs and athletics as well were managed and trained by a teacher of physical education. And at that time almost every child, every student was in some kinds of sports. I went to basketball and skiing and biathlon was attractive to me. And then later I had to choose. It was not possible to attend all clubs due to lack of time, so I had to choose one sport, and it was skiing. So you started when you were 12, and when did you win the first medal? Well, my first medal was a little later. That is, I trained for about two and a half years, and then I won the city championship among schools. In Chuchinsk, on Bolnichnaya, where today the is the sports base. They had city competitions and I won among my peers. A lot of memories are kept on the walls and shelves in these rooms. After all, no matter how far we are from our native home, the memory of those home regions are kept in the hidden in our hearts. This is a picture of my grandfather, Nikifor. It is very old. Well, I keep this photo for myself, for memory, to know where we all came from. So I keep it. Grandfather and grandmother? No, it is grandfather and his sister. Which year is that? It is the 50s, as I think. They are from the village of Chura, near Kirov. They were born there and lived very long. And my father is from there as well. And my mother is also from that region. Photos of those years have special light, faces look special. Yes, completely different faces, completely different looks. This is a photo of my father, Mikhail Nikiforovich. It was made in the mid of the 80s. Such a harsh, purely Russian look, Russian character. Was he strict? Yes, he was strict, but on the other hand, we were a big family, that is, we grew up together and educated each other. The street brought us up a little. Parents did not have much time for us, but everything was controlled in the family. That is, I cannot say that there was a special strictness, but at the same time, we were under control. Here I had a chance to touch the legendary skis, which brought many grand victories. And these are skis with which I won several medals during the World Championship of 1995. I have a photo from that time. Rossignol are one of my skis, which I'm very, very proud of. Very interesting skis. And how person a master chooses his equipment? 
Well, it is very difficult to choose, at the same time it is necessary, because every pair of skis has its own specific character, despite the fact that many skis belong to the same bunch. And it seems that skis from the same bunch are absolutely the same, but it's absolutely wrong. All of them are different skis, depending on material, glue, pressure in the machines. And here, for example, when we look at the inner side, I tried every ski. That is, in the beginning I used to watch them on the track. Then we tested them through a lot of pressure. That is, how they react under the pressure. Under the weight pressure, every 5 centimeters in order to know exactly what kind of reaction we need and the pressure we need to put on the skis for a better slipping. We need to put our weight slightly to the back or keep it in the middle part. That is, these are the things that are very important for a professional athlete. If a person is not a professional, then certainly he does not need those details. We are professionals. Every second was very important to us, so we always needed to know how skis can react to different weather conditions, weight, or what kind of repulsion should be on skis, strong or maybe a little delayed, a little bit slow. That's why our technique depends on skis. You adjust your technique to equipment. At the time of our meeting, Vladimir Mihailovich and his wife Valentina were about to become grandparents for the first time. And there is no doubt that their grandchildren will be proud of their grandfather's achievements no less than children. Are your children proud? Children are very proud. It is impossible not to be proud of this. And watched me on TV while growing up. They were rooting for me and very nervous, like Valentina. And they were worrying a lot about whether I win or lose competitions. Therefore, they are very proud of the history and parents that they have, both mother and father. Ah, beauty, very impressive. Yes, a lot has been done. More will be done. But that's us. This is the picture from our wedding. Seems familiar. Why? Home Museum for Smirnov is a place of appeasement, rest and recharging. And frankly, for a stranger like me, this place was very charging. Successes impress and minor turmoil look smaller amid that. And here, all of the Olympic medals. And this is the medal of the World Cup. Four gold, four silver and three bronze medals. Here are the Olympic medals. Those three are from 1988 to silver and bronze. These three are from Olympic Games of 1994. One gold, two silver. And there you see the bronze medal of the 1998 Olympic Games. Here are my orders. The Dunk Order, the Order of Friendship of the Peoples of 1988 and Medals of Honor. Those are two Crystal World Cups which I won in 1991. I wrote several books. We wrote the first book right after the 1994 Olympiad together with Mara Christensen. It was called Smira. Smira is a short for Smirnov, made in a Swedish manner. But this is the name of one of the favorite heroes of Swedish tales, the fox. Cunning, luck, ability to keep a near to the ground. What exactly has helped our Smira to remain champion forever? Here I wrote about sports, family and life after the sport. Why? Because everyone is very interested in life in sports. Many of them know it by results, because it is evaluated by results. But not everyone can find their place after the sport. So I tried to describe it in the book. Especially this transitional period from sport to normal life, where your former merits do not play such a big role. That is, you need to build everything again. Work, business, profession, communication, a place in a social society, 
All this needs to be rebuilt. And if you make everything right, there won't be any difficulties. Well, you left it in the prime of life. Not when it was no longer possible to stay in the sport. I left at age 34 and, of course, the results that I had, they still allowed me to stay on this level for a long time. That is not to be a leader, but to be in the top 10. But despite this, I was not interested to be in the top 10, because I had the highest achievements and it was not interesting to gradually go down. I always wanted an active life, active role and action. Therefore, at the age of 34, I decided that I would end the sports career and begin to build my own career. You must have a very great willpower to take and finish everything, right? Yes. After the decision to leave the professional sports, Vladimir Mihailovich decided to use his own practicality and a curious mind, the ability to take responsibilities and not to give up. So Smirnov became businessman. I am very proud of my history, of what I went through, because it was very difficult. There was rise during the Soviet Union, then breakdown, a new formation, a new finding, a new direction of work. And during this transition I saw other qualities myself. First, decision-making. I learned to make decisions. I learned to analyze the situation and take the direction that I need for further development. Not just for today, but for several years ahead. And when I finished the sports career, I was not confused, like, what will I do? I immediately had a plan. I had certain actions and I found what I will be doing. Maybe it was not the best decision, not the well-thought decision, but the decision was made and I made this decision and I was very happy. Right now, Vladimir Smirnov is doing business in several areas, in real estate, projects for the development of sports and sports facilities. He also participates in the development of the projects for the industrial 3D design and he's a member of the board of the company for the production of non-alcoholic beverages. Can I do it? It will be a historical moment. For me, it will be a historical moment. I want to buy a drink from Vladimir Smirnov. Please. Apple, orange, take this one, it is good. Orange is appleson in Swedish? Appleson, yes. Good language, we should learn it. When everything was just beginning, together with partners, they started supplying crystal clear Swedish water to other countries. It seemed so easy. However, the drinking water market was too saturated. The idea was on the verge of collapse, but Smura got another gift of fate. In 1997, or no, a year later, in 1998, we came to the conclusion that water is not selling well. This market is oversaturated, there is no place for us, and we decided to produce those drinks that were popular in the 50s, 60s, 70s here in Sweden, especially in the central part of Sweden, where we are today. This is Sundsvall, the central part, the middle of Sweden. I don't know how, but we found a whole folder of such drinks. Not drinks, but recipes for all drinks, which were produced here in Sundsvall. Yes, yeah, something like that for Sweden. Everything is grey. These are all the old labels they were in this folder. And the idea worked. The business started rising. So without having time to probably take a break after sports life, Smirnov was seriously engaged in business and still does not regret it. And when we began to produce these drinks with these old labels, people were just surprised that they can go back to the store and buy a drink from the time when they were young, for example. Well, it was some kind of happy coincidence. Yes, it was a coincidence. At that time we thought we would go bankrupt, that is, we will not be able to further develop this business. And when we found this concept, 
after long negotiations, we decided to reproduce those old drinks. That is, we took the original recipe and they have almost been forgotten, and nobody produced those drinks for the last 25-30 years. Amazing story! And the business went up, starting from 1999 to 1000. This business expanded wide. The impression is that this sunny person attracts good luck, or he's just able to interpret the signs that the fate brings him. After all, although having difficulties, like anyone else, Smirnov seems to be a blessed person. I brought you here because here we signed the contract when I moved to Sweden. Before I was invited here, in 1991, we had a world championship in Italy's Fiam Valley, and there were two big heroes, skiers Gunde Svan and Torni Mogren, and one more skier Jelena Valbe. And after the World Cup, they invited me to Sweden to participate in demonstration events. I remember those names. I saw them on TV. All of them are our colleagues. So we, after the World Championships and Valdi Fiam in Italy, we flew here for a small show. Me, Jelena, Nikolai, and a few more people in our team. Here was a corner restaurant. There was a table with a city view. We were sitting right there. This small ski slope is popular among local residents, turned out to be a significant place for Smira. We came here not only because of a beautiful view of the city and the bay. Exactly here we signed a contract at this place. I even have a picture at home. Here's tried up this path here. They had such banners. We welcome Smirnov with his family, right here. That is for me such a significant place, and in my history, in my events that I had in sports, and this was an event that affected almost my entire social life. Somehow it seems, or it is not, that your life is full of some signs, some kind of things, when all of a sudden it's just a click and something happens by itself. We must assume that, of course, it does not happen by itself. To make a decision, you need to dare. To do that, you need to analyze all of this, look through, not like I want it and I run. And why? What? Someone who's waiting for you? Who is minding you? And how do you settle things? That is, these are all the questions, they always have certain meanings. That is, if you do not look, not think about what will happen tomorrow, or you cannot live today. So, for almost 30 years now, our hero and his family live the Swedish life. They blend, I must say perfectly, they fluently speak the language, became close friends with neighbors, refuting the stereotype about the coldness of the Swedes. But they remain Kazakhstan people at the same time, with our temper, our hospitality, our sociability. You know, when people move abroad, they move for different reasons. Vladimir was an athlete, he was a skier. A very good local club, Stockville, paid attention to us when we moved here and they helped us a lot. Vladimir was always out of town and I was attending the Swedish language courses. We had such an international group. There were students, people from different countries, Canada, Bulgaria, Austria. There were not many people from the Middle East. First, it was difficult to communicate. Not everyone knew the Swedish language. But over time, the team became more closer and the language became much better, and communication became much easier. At first, it was certainly difficult even to make a doctor appointment. If you need to go with your child to a hairdresser, for example, you have to call the wife of the director of the club, Christina, who looked over our family. She said, Valentina, no problem, I can arrange everything. It was not easy to get used to, but since the decision was made, then the implementation of it should be serious. At first, Smyrna family invited a language teacher, who almost lived with them for a year. 
when the first eight months of autumn, winter and spring passed, and when we were going home, we had the feeling, hurry, hurry home. There were friends and relatives. We wanted to go to our own apartment so badly, clean everything, meet friends. That lasted for two, three years. And then slowly, when we started to settle down here in Sweden, when we learned the language, when we got a home, when Carolina was born, then the return to Kazakhstan has already become more like guest visit. We went there not as a home, but as a guest. And therefore it seems to me that in Sweden we adapted very well. We constantly remember Kazakhstan. We constantly remember Shuchinsk. Our friends. There is no such thing that we move to Sweden and cut off all contacts. So the homeland does not let go, it's always with you. Of course. Well, it's not something that does not let go. We don't want to be let go. Because it's our homeland. I already said that I have a great pride for the great for something that we had as Soviet, then Kazakhstan, and still my homeland, where I was born, where I was brought up, and there I matured as a young man. That's why we don't want to break all these ties that we have. With a great pride, we will carry it on, pass to our children. They were with us all the time, and they saw the house where I was born, and where we lived, an apartment where we lived and maternity home where our eldest daughter was born. And where I went to school, we took them to such places. They feel the same. We pass that pride for the country and love for the nationality of Kazakhstan. I think that our children are very proud and we are very proud, therefore, we don't want to stop the connection that we have with Kazakhstan, but vice versa, to develop it because anything can happen. Something interesting might appear and there will be some new interesting projects. We will work, watch and develop with great pleasure. Therefore, we have not limited ourselves with Sweden. The present life of Smirnov is full of ideas. He is not even thinking about the retirement. He is open to new projects and is happy to take on new business. Living in the north, where, by the way, the winters turned out to be not so severe as in the north of Kazakhstan, he often compares these regions and knows ideas and projects that could be introduced in Kazakhstan. However, he does not aspire to be someone who teaches everyone else with big speeches. Smirnov used to work and fight. Sometimes they invited me to participate in films. In the majority cases, 90% I refused, because it's a pure PR. I don't need it. I don't enjoy it. I will take part only where initiative is required. A desire is needed. Active people with active thoughts, some kind of progress, some result where I'm interested in working. That is an interesting role. The world-famous Smyra surprised us a lot. And he's still famous. Can you imagine he's still recognized on the streets? Well, it's nice when they recognize on the streets. It's always nice. Well, the Swedish people are more under demonstrative, right? Don't come to you because they're restrained. When people start coming up, I appreciate it very highly because I know their mentality, that they are a little bit cold and do not show their feelings. They do not ask a lot of questions. I think that he had to decide. Yes, yes. The story of Vladimir Smirnov is far from complete and his sports feats continue to inspire young and daring followers. And although coaching work has never attracted him, the example and openness is also a science. And even the weather in the northern town smiled to us on this day, forcing everyone around to be pleasantly surprised by the hot sun and the brightness of the colors. Well, now you know that our legendary Vladimir Smirnov lives somewhere far away in the city of Sundsvall, which was recently recognized as the most beautiful in Sweden.
A small town in central Sweden turned out to be full of surprises and entertaining stories, where the main thing was, of course, people who gave us another reason for pride. We continued the search for new stories. So, goodbye.